Hi everybody, it's Lee from the Great Plains Zoo in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Welcome to Bookworms. Today we're going to read Wild About Books by Judy Sierra with pictures by Mark Brown. It started the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer, and sat in her chair. At first all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. By reading aloud from the good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose, a wombat, an oryx, a lemur, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of skinks. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Forsaking their niches, their nests, and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Choosing thin books, and fat books, and cat-in-the-hat books, and new books, and true books, and heaps of how-to books. Giraffes wanted tall books, and crickets craved small books, while geckos could only read stick-to-the-wall books. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter, who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Raccoons read alone, and baboons read in bunches, and llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. Hyenas shared jokes with the red-bellied snakes, and they howled and they hissed till their funny bones ached. A tree kangaroo, who adored Nancy Drew, began solving mysteries right there at the zoo, such as, why were the bandicoots books overdue? Gently, Molly taught lessons in treating books right, for the boa constrictor squeezed Crichter too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up Goodnight Moon with their paws. Giant termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pictures right off of the pages. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. A cannibal twig silently devours a leaf, eating not eaten. Pretentious. Roll a ball of dung, any kind of poo will do, baby beetle bed. Stinks. I dig for treasure in my enchanted castle, a rotten apple. Boring. Hiss, 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 hiss. His 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 redundant. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barbary ape. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulu surprise. With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork, and a new to build a branch library there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check the books out. We can put them on shelves. And they did, and they do, to this very day. Three cheers for the zoo -brary. Hip, hip, hooray. When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They are snug in their niches, their nests and their nooks, going wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. The end. So we just got finished reading Wild About Books, and in that book, the pythons were writing their stories using their tails. This is our ball python named Lucy. And since we're talking about tails, one of the things to know about snakes is that most of their body is not their tail, only about this much, of the snake is her tail, the rest is her body. She has the same kind of organs inside we do, heart, lungs, stomach, they're just really long and skinny. 
If you'll notice, she's been sticking her tongue out. She's not making faces at us. She's using her tongue to smell, kind of like tasting the air. She also has some small pits under her eyes and above her mouth that help her sense heat. Most of what she likes to eat are very warm things like mice or rats, and that heat sensing helps her find her food. Ball pythons are called ball pythons because when they're scared, they curl up in a ball with their head in the middle. It helps protect them from predators and things that might want to eat them. And like all snakes, she has lots of big, strong muscles through her body to help her move and slither on her belly. If you enjoyed reading the story with us, check out our website, greatzoo.org slash education for more education opportunities. And if you're not from South Dakota, remember to support your local AZA accredited zoo or aquarium. Thanks. Have a great day.